Would visiting the pyramids of Giza and other parts of the Middle East be on your travel bucket list? Then stay tuned as we wing our way to Egypt with Alma Waterways. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications to get notified each time we post. Hi folks, welcome back to part two of our video series on the secrets of Egypt and the Nile with Alma Waterways, a truly one-of-a-kind trip for Deborah and I. Deb and I have quite a bit to say, so this is probably going to be the longest video in the series. Feel free to take advantage of the chapters below to zero in on the topic of most interest to you. And with that, let's get started. Joining me today is my partner in life and in travel, Deb. Hi, Deb. Deb. Hi. <laughs> so... This was really a one of a kind type of type of adventure for the both of us. It really ticked off a lot off the bucket list. Where should we start, Deb? Well, let's start at the beginning in Egypt. We had a three day stay in Cairo before we actually flew to Luxor and boarded uh, the Amadalia. Yeah, no, that make that makes a lot of sense. The first place that we stayed in the hotels, I have to say, is absolutely first class hotels. It was the Four Seasons in Cairo. It's a little bit further up the river, but it's right on the Nile, and the views are just absolutely stunning. And mm -hmm. for those folks that want to venture out, there's some wonderful restaurants right around where the hotel was, plus the excellent, fantastic restaurants that are actually just within the hotel itself. Yeah. Um, there's one hotel that's associated with the restaurant, which is actually on a boat on the Nile. And the other thing we should mention is that the hotel was right across the street from a, uh, a zoo. The only thing is, is the streets in Cairo are so very, very busy and nobody really pays too much attention to traffic rules. So you do take your life in your hands if you want to go across the street. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we actually heard a couple of stories about that. Yes. <laughs> as, we, as we went along. People were petrified. Lanes in Egypt were just kind of a suggestion. Yes. They, they cars yes, and every, they drive with their horn. <laughs> every which way, yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's amazing for us North Americans that are used to the running, mm -hmm. obeying the rules of the road. Well, there is no rules of the road in Egypt. It's just basically mm -hmm. whoever gets there first. Exactly. The hotel was absolutely lovely though we we stayed there on our pre-cruise land stay in in cairo and we also stayed there for a night after the cruise before we flew home and both were included in in the cruise itself but it it was a gorgeous hotel and i swear the the room we had the second time was even nicer than the first time and the first time was really nice <laughs> yeah. one of the things though that i will say is you know, it was nice to stay in the one hotel in Cairo, but it was even nicer when you got to the boat and you could actually unpack and relax. Um, and that's one thing about river cruising or cruising in general is that you get to stay in one place for however long your cruise is and you just, your hotel moves with you. So that was, that was nice. Yeah, no, and I, I agree with that because with this tour, and we'll talk about it in other videos, is is you have the options of a pre-cruise extension. And mm -hmm. for us, it was four days in Jordan. Yes. And then there's also post-cruise extensions. And for some folks that were with us, they were off to spend a few days in Israel after at the end of the cruise. Yes. And with those, you know, you're going back and forth between hotels and you're unpacking and packing and so it yeah. was nice once we got once we got actually got to the Amadalia that we could unpack once and yeah. it was and, our home away from home. And we had gone carry on, strictly carry on, uh, as compared to some people who had huge suitcases. So we really didn't have to, you know, scramble through our suitcases too much to find to find what we were looking for. But even that was an annoyance in and of itself. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're in Cairo, and our first night there was just more or less free free on our own time to relax and get ready for the adventure the next day. Where were we off to the next day? The next day, we actually went to the Egyptian Museum, and that's the old museum. 
the new one, which we saw from a distance when we were traveling around Cairo itself, looks absolutely gorgeous, but it's not open yet. Yeah. It's supposedly to open next month, but I'm not sure whether that's been delayed or not. It's been delayed several times, but we got to go to the old Egyptian museum, which which was kind of nice in and of itself because, as I mentioned to someone, it was kind of reminiscent of those uh, places that you see in the old movies, you know, in in when they're portraying like Egypt or Morocco or where wherever, and uh, they had the the big metal fans way up in the corner of of the room, trying to to uh, get some cool great breezes in the place because they aren't air conditioned. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the cast that's bar. a bit of a challenge <laughs> yeah. in the old one, but yeah. but the exhibits made it worth it. We were there for most of the morning. Yeah, but and, you, but, but even morning can't do that place justice because there's just so much to see. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you'd have to spend days and days there. Yeah. I think one of the highlights was besides the fact that it was the only place that was cool, and perhaps air conditioned in and of itself, was the uh, the King Tut display. Where you got to see the 500 pound gold <laughs> barrel <laughs> mask and yeah. all of the treasures that went along mm -hmm. with it. That's one thing about going there. There's no photography within that in that particular with, room. Yes, which, anywhere, anywhere which else you can there. understand. Yeah, no, for sure. With that it, much gold kicking around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anywhere else in the museum, you were free to take pictures. I was surprised at the amount of of mummies that were there. Yeah. You know, like they were stacked in in uh, display cases and something i hadn't realized before is that the sarcophagus had an actual depiction of the person's face on it you know as much as as, as close as they could paint it to what a person actually looked like so they so the person could find their body in the afterlife right so I, I found that was fascinating it, oh yeah they would paint the person's face on the top of it might have been yeah. just like a wooden sarcophagus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you were actually looking at that person. Yeah, what they look from like. From 3,100 years ago. Yeah. What they look yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah, that was fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really was. So where were we off to after that? Uh, we had lunch not very far from, from the museum. And then we were um, actually off to Saladin Citadel and the Alabaster Mosque. It was just unbelievable inside. Yeah, no, it's amazing. We one of the one of the things that that that, has, that struck me all the way along on this tour is the, is the history involved. Um, yeah, and like, of course we had our Egyptologists with us all the way, and yeah. and we were using those quiet boxes, so you know you had them on just about all the time, and you were hearing everything, the history and and. Just all the highlights of it. It was great. So that was day one in Cairo. In yeah. fact, we were back to the hotel after that to get ready for our next day. Where did we go to next? The next day was a big day. In the morning, we went to um, Memphis. Which is the ancient capital. Yeah. And, and after that, we went to the Step Pyramid at Zoser. Mm -hmm. Right, Saqqara and King Zoser's Step Pyramid. Exactly. And one, I recall Dina, our Egyptologist, uh, saying that that was one of her particular highlights because it felt like this was the true, true Egypt. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah, later yes, on that later on that day, we went to the pyramids of Giza. Mm -hmm. But the pyramids of Giza are in now. There's been so much things built up. They're almost next door. They're they're basically next door to Cairo. So you can see Cairo and all the city from the pyramids if you look in one direction. Saqqara, if you could just imagine yourself what it was like uh, 3,000 years ago, it was a fascinating place to visit as well. And speaking of the pyramids being basically next to the city or in the city, uh, we had lunch at uh, Mina House, and, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous spot. It's, it's a hotel and, and restaurant. And uh, when you went out in the grounds, like the pyramids were basically next door. Yeah. 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 You were, you were inside of the pyramids and beautiful gardens. Yes. And a lot of history of that hotel. It's mm -hmm. been frequented by many famous people over the years. 
Yes. And then, then, we're, then we were off to the pyramids and um, we were there at like the height of this tourist season. We were just there on like the edge of it, but it was still really, really, really busy. And there were a lot of people there just to make money, uh, you know, like vendors to sell you things, people to assist you taking pictures and <laughs> all that kind of thing. So it was a very, very busy place. And that kind of goes without saying in pretty much all of the places that we visited. But one of the things that was really great about the guides that were with us with Alma Waterways mm -hmm. is... Number one, they offered, before you got there, they offered advice on if you wanted to support the local economy and help some of these vendors, what you should actually pay for some yes. of the wares that they were selling. Yeah, because, you know, like you wouldn't be at all used to like the Egyptian money or yep. or what things should cost. Yeah. So that was fantastic. Yeah. You know, so you know that when somebody's, saying something at a price that's too high, you know, how low you can haggle without them, yeah. you know, insulting them. <laughs> and in, yeah. And, and, in, and, in, and in some cases, the, uh, our guides actually did, did some of the negotiation. Yes. So that was great. And then the pyramids Giza. Well, you know, what can you say about that? It's, it's, yeah. it's a once in a lifetime thing. And it was it, just am it, exactly. amazing to see it. And, uh, we were lucky not enough to go on camel ride there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually got you up I, on a camel. Maybe I shouldn't say lucky enough, but anyway, <laughs> it was an experience. Well, that was just one of those things that you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> you also have the opportunity to actually go inside the main pyramid. The guides had said, you know, yes, you're welcome to do that. But just to let you know, if you're claustrophobic, it's like four yeah. by four. You're going to be bending over all the time. It's hot. It's already hot. Because most days it was 95 to 100. No, most days it was well over 100. It was like 100 to 104. And, and a lot hotter inside tombs and yeah. whatnot. So not not a lot, not a lot, not a lot of our group took people up on it. No. But you did have the opportunity to do that. Yeah, just just to say that you've done it, there yeah. apparently wasn't anything at the end. I satisfied myself with just touching the pyramid and sitting sitting on the edge of it. Yes. Yeah. I, and we also went to see the Sphinx. <laughs> All right, yes. Well, of course, yes. we couldn't forget that, could we? Once again, it was just just amazing, just amazing history. Really. Yes, exactly. I can't say enough about the guides and the Egyptologists that were with us because they really bring it to life. So that was day three You're and right. then day four. Day four, we left Cairo and, and we flew down to Luxor so we could board the Amadalia. So as part of this trip, there is a total of five in-country flights. They flew us from Cairo to Luxor to board the Amadalia. Once there, later in the trip, we took a return flight to um, Abba Simbel. Abba Simbel. Yeah, and then, then you have to return from Luxor to Cairo. That's yeah. that's four flights. Yeah. The fifth one came from the fact that we did the pre-cruise, so we right. had to fly from, from Amman in Jordan uh, to Cairo. A, a lot of flights, but certainly worth it. It was also interesting to see the Egyptian airports. <laughs> yes, uh, a lot of security in Egypt. And uh, it was also interesting to be able to see the landscape from the air. For sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it gives you it gives you a good sense of the geography. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you, you know, you'd be flying over the pyramids yeah. and whatnot, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. so our first night, once we were on board Amadalia, was a visit to the Temple of Luxor at nighttime. And it was just wonderful. A lot of beautiful sights and sounds and really something to behold. The next day was a busy day, too. Every day was a busy day. Yeah. <laughs> the next day we went to visit... The Valley of the Kings and the Valley of the Queens. We went to the Valley of the Queens first, and there were a number of tombs that you could visit there. The one that was that I found really striking was Queen Nefertari's tomb because of the the painting inside, like the the hieroglyphics, and they were all painted. It was really beautiful. It was like it was done yesterday. Exactly. Like Very it's just, hot, but beautiful. <laughs> yeah, just amazing that after these thousands of years that things could be in such excellent condition. Now, they did do a little bit of restoration work on it, but and it gives you a good sense of, of the history. Yeah, and uh, so, again, we went to the Valley of the Kings second. 
Yeah. And then there was uh, a stop at the temple of Hat Hat Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut. I never pronounce it. The temple Hatshep of Hatshepsut. So Hatshepsut. <laughs> yeah, Hatshepsut. And wonderful views. You actually can see across the river to another temple. And the Egyptologist was telling us is how all of it kind of interconnected. And you know, we should mention that the Nile River is the longest river in the world, but it goes through some very dry areas in the north. So like basically there's like a, a small strip on either side of the river that's green and the rest is like Sahara. So when you're looking across the river, you'll see just this strip of, of green and then you'll see the brown hills, you know, yeah. behind. We also had a look at the Colossi of Memnon, and then we reboarded to Amandalia for some scenic cruising, and we headed off to Edfu. Edfu. So the next day, when we got to Edfu, there was a visit to the Temple of Horus. It was fairly quiet that day. We just did scenic cru cruising in the afternoon and the evening. And but you know, to... we should talk about that scenic cruising. Because that's actually one of the things I found most enjoyable about the whole cruise. Wonderful to just to sit back. You know, we actually spent time in our stateroom just chilling out on our bed and with the door open and watching in the Niles. Yeah, so, we but, had French balconies, so. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really enjoyable. You could go up, you could go up on the, the sun deck as well. Yeah. Because it was in a lot, in many places it was shaded keep you out of the sun and you could enjoy everything that was going by. There was also a pool up there if you wanted to swim. No. One of the things that Alma Waterways is noted for is they have El Fresco dining. Most of the ships on the Nile only have one restaurant. Well, Alma Waterways on the Almadalia actually has two. There's the main dining room and there's the El Fresco dining, which is basically a deck on the rear of the ship, which is outside. And that's where you have have your dinner and it was it was a wonderful evening and it's all all egyptian fare mm -hmm. and, and it's included yeah. the only thing is you have to make a reservation yeah yeah because the seating is limited but that really wasn't that really wasn't an issue because over the length of a seven-day cruise it's no problem for you to uh, pick out a time where you a time yes. or even twice that you could go spend time in this El Fresco yeah. dining. The only thing that limited it was the fact you had to be cruising. They don't they don't do it when they're not cruising. There was only was it three days or four days they offered that? I think it was three. I think it might have been only three, yeah. So one thing that you should really be aware of on this cruise, depending on the time of year, is it can be quite warm. You want to make sure that you have a good hat, sunscreen, a uh, water bottle. <laughs> water bottle. You want to you definitely want to stay hydrated because you're on the move a lot and it's really dry. Yeah. And Alma Waterways was really good because there was always cold water on the uh, motor coaches that we'd yeah. use to go to the various sites. Yeah. And, and and water on board in your rooms and so like like I said, it is warm. Yes, it is warm. And one of one of the issues with the fact that it's so very warm is you're quite often moving from 104 degrees into the air conditioned ship or into the air conditioned bus. Now the the motor coaches you don't notice it as much, but moving into the air conditioning on the ship it can be quite a jar to your system. Our guide suggested to turn down or turn up. I don't know which way you want to put it. Make your make your room warmer before you before you leave, so that when you come back, it's it's fairly warm. Like it's not down to the lowest you know temperature right. that you'd normally keep it at. Yeah. Uh, and then just gradually lower the temperature as you as you get used to it. The other thing I found helpful is in the public areas, which I found colder than our our, our stateroom, which of course in your stateroom you can control your own heat or cold, is as a woman I can wear a pashmina so, or a shawl. That helped quite a bit. So that takes us to day seven. And day seven was quite an adventure. Starts out early in the morning. We boarded another flight. We headed off to the airport and boarded the aircraft and flew to Abba Simbel, which was like only about probably less than five minutes from the airport. 
to the actual ABBA symbol yeah. site. We spent, you know, several hours looking around ABBA symbol and learning all the history. Yeah. yeah. And one thing I found that I hadn't realized before, and we had watched a, a number of documentaries on Egypt, which I would suggest people do before they go, because that, along with uh, what the Egyptologist tells you, can greatly add to your understanding of, of the country and what you're seeing, was the fact that Abba symbol that we see today is Abba symbol moved. Because when they created Lake Nassar, the original site would have been underwater with the help of apparently United States and I don't know um, if there were other countries involved as well. There was a few other countries that did did get involved with it and that was quite an undertaking. Yes. It actually sh showed it actually showed some of the uh, construction work that was involved in doing it. So yes, they they even created like sort of like the the mountain behind it because it was originally carved into a mountain. Uh, I think one of the the highlights of that beside besides the two temples that are there was Lake Nassar itself <laughs> and the fact that uh, you know you get this beautiful huge body of water and where we were it was fenced uh, it, because of the preponderance of crocodiles. Yeah. You can't go near the lake at all. Yeah, but it's but it's a gorgeous spot and an amazing public work when you think about it. All of the acres that they flooded to to make this like it's done wonders for Egypt. And like when you're in Aswan, you can actually drive over the old dam, but you can see the new dam in the distance. It's it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, and as you're driving the old dam, you can see where the river once flowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that in itself was interesting. So that was Abba Symbol. When you came back, though, you did have the option of going For on the a on Felucia a Felucia ride. ride. That's yeah. that's the traditional Egyptian boat that that you usually see in pictures, you know, with the sail and yeah, and and so on. And uh, or you could instead of that, you could opt to go for yeah. um, afternoon tea at the Old Cataract, which is. One of those, again, another one of those famous hotels that you yeah. hear about when you when you talk about Egypt. Yeah. We did not go for high tea, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, because I and after that I was watching uh, Death on the Nile and the old cataract was featured in it. <laughs> and I was thinking, dang, I could have gone there. <laughs> well, so. you know, we'll just have to go back. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> but on that, the one thing that. I will say about this tour that Amma Waterways does. Most people are probably going to do Egypt and the Middle East as, as kind of like a one and done. You know, I think you'd probably agree with me that this is a busy, busy tour or busy vacation. So you're on the go a lot. Yes. But the upside of that is if you want to get as much history and tick off Egypt and parts of the Middle East off your to-do or bucket list. Uh, yeah, it's an excellent to way to do on. it. And um, as well, like in the evenings, you weren't sitting around twiddling your thumbs. Well, we already mentioned the dining at Al Fresco. Right. Uh, that that evening of the day we're, we're just discussing, that was the evening that we had uh, the gentleman come in and uh, he was the whirling dervish. Yeah. <laughs> so... That was that was quite entertaining. There was another evening we had a belly dancer come in. Yeah, she was great. She she was really great. She was and she was the, she was absolutely excellent. Yeah. And then they always do an Egyptian themed party, which was a lot of fun, and people were right into it and really enjoying themselves, dressing up yes. and yeah. having a, having a re really good time. So so your your evenings weren't really where you sit around and have nothing to do. There was always something to do. And then there was, you know, a couple of evenings up when we were cruising down the river, we were just sitting up on the sun deck and it was just lovely mm -hmm. sitting there talking and having, having a couple of drinks. Discuss yeah. Discussing what you did that day. And yeah, that's something else that was very popular is Ama Waterways does what they call their sip and sail hour. Mm -hmm. So on each and every day, 
at a particular time of day. Normally, it's between 6.30 and 8 o'clock at night. They'll have a, a particular hour where you can order any any drink and it's, and it's on the house. It, yes. It's part. It's all included as part of it. And a lot of people take advantage of that. People get together and they talk and they enjoy the day. And one of the things that we found, Deb, like part of this particular vacation was the wonderful people that we met on board. Yes. Because it's not a lot of people. Uh, everybody kind of got to know one another, exchanging stories. It was just a great experience. And that, that to me, in a lot of cases, is part of a great experience. And we had the added advantage of having that pre-cruise uh, land stay in Jordan, yeah. where we met quite a number of the people that were going to be on the cruise with us. And you got to know them there and developed a bit of a bond and, and so yep. on that just carried over to the cruise. Yeah. And quite often those are, those friendships last for a very long time. Yes. All right. So that takes us through Abba Simbel. We're now on to day eight on the river. We yeah. leave Aswan and make our way to Komombo. Uh, but before that, there's a trip to the Filet Temple and Nubian Village. Yes, you which, did that in the morning, yes. Yep, yeah, that we did that in the morning. Then more scenic sailing to Edfu via Komombo. And Komombo, Komombo is another wonderful temple. And one of the things about that is with Ama Waterways, we're heading back up the river now from Aswan back to Luxor. When we were heading down the first time, we sailed by that temple and the cruise manager pointed out to me, he said, see all the ships that are there at that temple right now? And I think yeah. at the time uh, there was like maybe 10 ships there. Yeah. River cruise and it was ships. the middle of the day. It and it was in the middle of the day. We arrived in the evening time. It, we were the only ship there. We, we got had to, the site all to ourselves, basically. Yeah. And a wonderful experience with the sun setting over the Nile and stuff. Just fantastic. Yes. And they do like Alma Waterways does that deliberately. They've designed their itinerary to to give you that that experience. They really think they really think about giving their guests the best experience. And sometimes that includes uh, okay, when can we arrive at a site where there'll be less people and the time of day is perfect? So. And uh, after we uh, visited there, there was also an adjacent uh, museum of uh, mummified crocodiles, which was quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was that was fascinating. And and basically, the the ship docks like right below. Yeah. This area. So that evening you were able to look over and, and the temple was all lit up and it's just beautiful. Yeah, that's day eight, uh, day nine. We spent most of that day cruising, a very, very, very relaxing day. In this day in the cruise, the cruise manager met with everybody and gave a very detailed explanation of what was going to happen during disembarkation in a few days. So he keeps everybody, they kept everybody up to speed. So that was great. Yeah. After the scenic cruising, we arrived back in Luxor and we had a visit to the Karnak Temple, followed by a visit to the Papyrus Institute, where they showed you how they make their papyrus paper. And you have the ability, they actually gave us a gift there with papyrus with our names on it that you could fill in. And you could also buy artwork that was available there and you could either take it with you or they'd ship it for you. Yeah. And it is really interesting. Yes, and a beautiful, beautiful uh, one peppers that you got. <laughs> yeah, we Deb and I, Deb and I actually have nicknames, which we won't reveal here. <laughs> but I, but I will show. They're the we, grand grandkids nicknames for us. <laughs> yeah, grandkids nicknames for us. We won't reveal here, but if you could read hieroglyphics, you can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the next day after Luxor is is a, is another day that Alma Waterways includes on their tour that a lot of the other suppliers don't do. And that was a trip to Kina, a sailing up the river to Kina and to, for a visit to the Temple of Hathor. So we had a full day sailing up, up the beautiful section of the Nile to visit this temple. And after we, we visited the temple, then again, sailing back to Luxor and more history with a beautiful temple, the Temple of Hathor. And again, they keep it going. Uh, the, next <laughs> yeah. the next morning, we fly to Cairo. And before and... you're even allowed to go back to the hotel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Before they take you back to the hotel. We, we went to have lunch, uh, a yeah. tour and lunch. 
And this was an exclusive thing. Uh, it was to the Abdeen Palace. And a pri private tour of the Abdeen Palace with lunch at the Abdeen Palace. Yeah, and it was... It, it was really interesting. My yeah. gosh, beautiful, just beautiful palace. And the lunch was to die for. With the Abdeen Palace, this is the one one tour that our Egyptologists took a back seat because the people at the Abdeen Palace want their own guides to conduct it. Yes. It was in, totally fascinating because you got to see the complete history of Egypt and all of the influences of various people that came through Egypt over the years, the mm -hmm. French, the English. Um, yeah. It's just amazing. And we went from there then to a church. Yes, it's one of the Coptic churches. It's called the Hanging Church or the Church of the Virgin Mary. And it was the way that it was built on the foundations. It's not meant that anybody was hung there. And so. you look down through the floor to the foundations and, and you get a view of what Christianity Christianity was like in Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know, we took around and took a tour of the old city of Cairo and our Egyptologist is giving us all a history of everything that's going yes, by. And a lot of the buildings and, yeah. and so on. Yeah. And then it was back to the four seasons for our final night before we boarded our flight to go home yeah. at the end of the And the um, waterways looked after us at the airport, right to the point where we had to go through security, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't say enough good about that. Yes. Because both it's a really on, busy airport and yeah, very confusing. Yeah. Both on arrival and departure, uh, mm -hmm. the folks from Alma Waterways will meet you. And they make sure that they get you through security. They get you pointed in the right direction. They're there waiting for you the minute that you deplane. And then when we we're at the Four Seasons, we had specific instructions. Okay, you need to be in the lobby at this particular time. There's a guide that goes with you. And this particular gentleman, he was with us all the way, all the way to... So when we to, had to go through... To, to go start. to the gate. So uh, it, it was fantastic because because in Egypt, there's there's kind of like two securities. There's security just to get inside the building. Yep. And then, of course, it's, there's the security to get on the plane itself in an airport like that. It's, it's really nice to have that person guiding you the whole way and telling you what yeah. to do otherwise you'd be wandering around <laughs> and it, when it comes to when it comes to running through uh their airports and their security it's always good that you can travel as light as you can yes um, i because that'll speed I, up that'll speed up the process yeah. for you because yeah, you are going to go through in most of these airports you are going to go through two security checks yeah exactly i am going to have a blog up on our website realtravelexperts.com before the end of the month and it'll have 10 things that you should know before you go on a trip to Egypt. It's going to to highlight some of these tips and things for for making your trip a little bit smoother that right we on. came across when we did it. What was your favorite part? In Egypt, I think it was the Egypt Museum <laughs> to <laughs> tell you the honest truth. <laughs> I just really enjoyed seeing the artifacts. And I suppose I'm I'm going to have to go with the Temple of Luxor in the evening time. To see these temples at nighttime with the way they display the lights on them is really, really nice. You no, know, that's like, gorgeous. So when you go, folks... Take lots of pictures because you're going to want to you're going to want to look back at them. There's so, so much to see and so much to do. And Alma Waterways does a fantastic job of showing you as much as they possibly can in a short period of time. It's memories for a lifetime. It really is. All right. Well, be sure to check in on our uh, review of the pre-cruise. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> That's going to be in our next video. We're going to we're going to talk about the pre-cruise option that we did and along with the other options that Alma Waterways has available, either pre-cruise or post-cruise to give folks the a good a good look at what's available. It's all an experience. Well folks, that's going to do it for today. Be sure to check back with us for part three. For now, we'll just wish you safe and happy cruising and we hope to see you on a Lido deck real soon. And that about wraps things up for today, folks. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is part two in our series on Egypt and Jordan with Alma Waterways. In our next video, Deb and I will take a look at the pre-cruise option in Jordan, 
as well as other optional post-cruise and pre-cruise extensions that you can add on to make this a wonderful vacation. And our final video in the series will feature interviews with key members of the Alma Wider Race team that helped to set the Alma Dahlia Secrets of Egypt and the Nile experience a cut above all the rest. You can find links to all of the videos in the description below, as well as a link to all of Deborah's blog posts on Egypt and the Nile. If you'd like more information about Alma Waterways or the secrets of Egypt and the Nile with Alma Waterways, simply send a question to questions at Real Travel Experts. Visit our website, realtravelexperts.com to find a travel advisor near you or leave a comment. We always respond. Deborah and I would love to hear from you and we love to talk about Egypt. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, please like, subscribe, and share this video. It helps us to spread the word and is certainly appreciated. So until next time, happy travels.